Yeah. Okay, Minister. Uh, yeah, we will support this amendment insofar as it seeks to uh, <clears throat> facilitate uh, the planting uh, of native forest on small parcels of land and to uh, allow that uh, to happen and allow schemes to be set up to allow that to happen relatively easy. So yes, we will support it. Um, but there is, as others have expressed, concerns about the way this has been sprung on people and the lack of consultation uh, with uh, stakeholders in, uh, who are concerned with forestry, either in industry or uh, environmentalists or whatever. Uh, I have my sources in forestry and they're usually on to me if there's anything moving and they hadn't heard word, any word of this. Uh, and they're on everything. So um, uh, I think that's a problem uh, and there's concerns about it. And as others have said, uh, measures like this uh, cannot be used to camouflage our failures in other areas uh, or to substitute for the necessary action that has to take place in other areas uh, where we are uh, failing. Um, the, uh, the licensing issue and the backlog of, uh, on licenses has been already mentioned uh, as a major concern. Uh, and the fact that we are likely looking at, or very possibly looking at, net deforestation taking place in this country, uh, uh, as suggested by the massive, the greater number of uh, felling licenses being issued uh, compared to a, a fraction of that for afforestation uh, licenses and the EPA uh, signalling a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I brought it up here, uh, where they were signalling that they believed there was a danger of net deforestation because felling was happening essentially uh, dictated by market concerns rather than by the best stewardship and guardianship of uh, forestry. And um, Another concern, obviously, I flagged recently with the threatened sale of the Kilgar Forest in Enniskerry, which I'm glad Quilcha uh, backed off on, but it, it posed very serious questions. Uh, and I've put in questions since, trying to understand what on earth ever possessed Quilcha to imagine that an amenity forest might be a good idea to sell uh, when we're supposed to be meeting climate and biodiversity. Uh, targets and a similar threat uh, to a forest down in Kinsale and Cork and so on, and indeed that significant sales are going on by Quilcha uh, 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 on, uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, and that is linked to the mandate of Quilcha, uh, which at one level we're told are trying to re-pivot re uh, towards biodiversity and so on, but in reality uh, are much of what they do is about replanting, clear felling, Sitka spruce, and then replanting 90 to 95% uh, Sitka spruce, perpetuating a failed, uh, a failed forestry model, and not doing much in the way of actual active uh, afforestation. And against that background, the idea that they're selling off amenity forest and that there could be any possible justification for doing that uh, just seems to make absolutely no sense and suggest there's something fundamentally wrong with the mandate uh, of uh, Quilche being operated on a sort of commercial uh, basis. The other thing, obviously, relating to Deputy Cahill's point, I mean, I'd like to think we, we can break from the Sitka Spruce industrial forestry model, but what if we're going to do that, which I think we have to do for climate and biodiversity reasons and for all sorts of reasons, it also has to be a new forestry model that actually delivers a, a living, a decent living uh, for, uh, for farmers who are engaged in forestry, uh, which at the moment uh, many feel can only be delivered by the, the Sitka Spruce uh, monocultural uh, model. So we need to break uh, from that, but we need to actually give real supports to farmers uh, to do so. I'll leave it at that.